Uh, so first, tell me a little bit about Supergiant Games and Bastion. Yeah, so Supergiant Games uh, is a small studio based out of a living room of a house in San Jose, California. Um, it was formed by a couple of former colleagues of mine from uh, when we were working together at Electronic Arts in Los Angeles, Amir Rao and Gavin Simon, and uh, we all kind of left our jobs uh, in August of 2009, and about a month later, Amir and Gavin were hunkered down in this house and started making Bastion. Uh, we were just really impressed with a lot of the stuff that was happening in, in uh, downloadable games. Um, and and wanted to see if we could do that ourselves, really. Uh, and Bastion is is our first game as a studio. Uh, we have what a, a team of seven, uh, core team of seven people worked on this game. Um, and uh, Bastion, uh, of course, is an uh, action RPG that that we made. That's all kind of fully narrated. That's that's one of the things that stands out to people about it. And it has this uh, uh, kind of painterly 2D uh, hand painted art style um, that that also stands out to people about it and we wanted to create a strong first impression with the presentation uh, hopefully to get people kind of hooked uh, for the narrative experience and kind of the gameplay depth uh, that we uh, you know that we put into it are you guys concerned that you've raised the bar too high for your second game oh uh, i mean i i think this game you know this game sets the bar for us uh, we're not worried about setting the bar too high for ourselves because this game is an expression of what we're, what we're capable of. I mean, I think if anything, um, we'll have, in whatever we do next, I think we'll have certain advantages. Like, one of the things about this game is that uh, the team was formed as the game was being built, um, so we've never all had a chance to work together at the same time, like from the beginning of a project. And I think the kind of chemistry that we've built up as a team um, will hopefully help us in whatever we do next. But I mean, I don't, uh, to, to your question though, it's an interesting question. Um, I don't think we will, we will attempt to avoid the trap of trying to like make like better games every single time. Like, because I think trying to make something like better and better leads to this mindset of like, well, we need bigger set pieces and the game needs to be longer and add more features and stuff like that. We want to stay small, we want to keep making games with with the characteristics of this game that could uh, make the player feel immersed into some sort of a, like a unique world of some sort. Oh, we definitely don't want, want to fall into the trap of like more of the same, but more so now. Um, that's not what we're about. Um, you're quite unique in the industry in that you're an acclaimed games journalist and now an acclaimed game developer. Is that an oxymoron? <laughs> you, you'll have to decide if it's an oxymoron uh, uh, or not. I, yeah, that's not for me to, you know, I, I'm certainly not alone in, in this kind of path, although it is um, relatively uncommon, but um, there, there are guys like the lead designer on Fallout 3, uh, Emil uh, Pagliarulo, I, I've never met him, but he, he's a former uh, game journalist, for example. Um, but yeah, you know, as, as for me personally, I wanted to make games since I was a little kid, um, and I wasn't, I didn't feel competent as a programmer. I tried it in high school and stuff like that, and it didn't really take to it. So I got to writing about games. I had to like sort of justify all the time I was spending on games to myself. And I, and you know, suddenly I, I fell very much in love with that side of thing. Um, but you know, I, I worked at GameSpot for more than 10 years and kind of woke up one day and it's like, I'm no closer uh, to working on games now than I was a long time ago. Um, so it was something that if I never tried it, I would have, I would have regretted it. So it, it was very important this to me to, to be able to give it a shot. Um, and uh, I always thought that, you know, being able to play as many games as possible, if nothing else, it would, it would give me a broad, uh, a broad base to work for. Like, at least I know, I have a sense of what works for me and what doesn't work for me. I can, I can think of examples of games that do certain things well or, fell into certain traps and stuff like that and that certainly doesn't give me all the answers um, but it at least um, it at least helps inform uh, some of my thinking because I played I played so many great games uh, so many games inspire me and stuff like that and I, I just want to follow in the footsteps of these classic games that like made me want to do this stuff so after making a game like Bastion how long do you have to rest before you can start working on the next one <laughs> one week um, we no, I, I, I took a I took a week of I took a week off. Um, you know, right after E3, uh, we we then that was around the time that we were finished with the Xbox 360 version of the game, even though it didn't come out for a little while later. Um, and then we just uh, finished the Steam version. Something like PAX, this is kind of vacation for us. Um, our game is done and out there. We're just kind of selling our soundtrack CD and stuff like that. 
um, we're we're all kind of we're all excited about what's what's coming next for, for us. I mean, I think we we do need to gather our, our thoughts a bit and stuff like that because um, we did push uh, really hard uh, to get the game ready and to to the to the level that it's at. Um, but uh, yeah, it's very important to rest up and kind of refresh your mind between projects. Um, and so hopefully we'll do that uh, <laughs> sometime later this year. But it's been an in it's been an intense year for us overall. Awesome. Gate was, very cool. Thank you very much. Maybe yeah, a little thanks. strange to some people. It's like, okay, well, you're you're kind of like a Wikipedia for video games, or, or you know that sort of thing. But but then you've got this very traditional kind of editorial side, and uh, the end result is you know 